Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this sword right here. It is a bastard sword from Badger Blades, and this needs some caveats and context before I start. This is a secondhand sword, one that I bought secondhand. It was used, it's been handled, and it's not representative of a new one that you would get from Badger Blades, so keep that in mind. Along with that, know that it's very old. Uh, the stuff they make now, the newer version is, I think, around $450. It's called the All Steel Bastard Sword. It's got a lot of similarities, but I think it's a little bit more refined, and it doesn't, well, I think it addresses some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about. But uh, construction methodology, the way it's built, some of the blade profiles and stuff are the same, and so I think this video might offer some some insight if you were thinking about buying one, happen upon one secondhand, or you're at a Renaissance festival looking to pick one up. So anyway, uh, this video will be a little bit of a talky head video. I'm not going to cut with it. I've sold this sword. It's now somebody else's property. But before it leaves my collection, there's a chance for me to blabber on about it a little bit. Hopefully, hopefully you find it useful or interesting. Um, before I talk about Bitbob fit features and all that kind of stuff, I do want to note a little bit about Badger Blades and the context behind what they're trying to build. So uh, Badger Blades is not making historical one-for-one -one replicas or even, um, yeah, they're making sword-like objects or swords that are influenced by the, the cultures or blade styles that they are, uh, that their, their namesake says. Uh, they make katanas, they make you know, bastard swords and long swords and the like, but all of them have a, a certain flair that seems to favor durability. And on their site, they say that cutting two by fours and concrete blocks and the like is considered acceptable use for their product. And if you're gonna make a product that's intended for that, well, you're in a narrow group. There are people that seem to make swords that favor durability, but saying that it's intended use and that you can go ahead and do it and that will warranty it is, is kind of a different thing. Not a lot of companies do that. It seems like Badger Blades does. Uh, so you might ask, why didn't you do that, Matt? <laughs> well. In the warranty, I, I didn't push or ask for an exception. It says that if you're trying to break the sword, uh, that the warranty is void. And that is, in fact, what I'm doing in many of my reviews, so that's why I didn't. Um, if you're cutting a concrete pole or a metal pole in your backyard for fun, then it might be covered if you're doing it for YouTube shenanigans to test and see if it's going to break. It sounds like a no. Now, I got this sword actually with the intention of doing a review of all of the various vendors that are at the Minnesota Renaissance Festival. That's where I go. That's where I first got to handle some real swords. It holds a nostalgic place in my heart. Badger Blades was among those companies that's been there for a while uh, that exposed me as a young man to swords. So I was hoping to get a video together of all the vendors that are there, uh, but my collection is volatile. It moves around a lot. I've sold this one now and it never really quite happened. So this is my last chance to talk about it. I thought I would and that's <laughs> that's why I didn't break it and why I'm blabbing about it now. Anyway, uh, Badger Blades, they're not making one-for-one -one replicas. They're making things that are supposed to be durable. That's what it says in their website, and they warranty it. Uh, I think that it's important to note that because the sword has flaws and oddities to it, but if you're looking for a, a thing to go in the backyard and have fun with, uh, that's what they're targeting, and they're targeting folks at Renaissance festivals. Well, targeting might not be the right word, but that's the clientele that they're serving, and they may not necessarily want a one-for-one -one replica or a sword that is proportionally similar to, to antiques or things that existed in history. Um, so with that in mind, I'll talk about Bitbob's fit features and the like. The pommel, the bit down here, this little end cap piece. Well, the thing to note about the pommel, first off, is on their website, they have a picture of a tang, which seems pretty robust. There is no nut, there is no tang, or at least there's not one to be seen, as well as the pommel is not a screw-on variety. It's not like a wall hanger. So because it's atypical, I did a little digging and I was able to find some other people that posted videos of their handles taken off. And indeed, this is scales, bounding cord, and the pommel and guard are actually welded on. Now, this is often a concern because welds can create a weak point. They're not typically cooled well and can disrupt the heat treatment to create a brittle spot that often causes things to break. I've experienced this in other swords that I've pushed to failure, but these have generally a pretty strong reputation for holding together. So however they're welded on, they seem to be done so in such a way that it is still allowed and functional to be used pretty aggressively. Anyway, the pommel itself is small as wheel pommels go, and I'm not a big fan of wheel pommels in general. This one, though, is pretty light. I can grab onto it easily if I want to control the sword. It doesn't hurt my hand. It's chamfered in, in ways that are very ergonomic and useful. It looks a little dinky on the end, but in terms of usability, I actually, I actually think it's pretty solid. It doesn't move. It's rock solid on there, and this sword is been used and uh, the fact that it's still on there is good. Uh, moving to the, the grip here, the grip is bound in what looks like nylon cord, a paracord of some kind. It's alternating between black and green. There's a few different colors that they, they offer. Um, 
I don't know if they still do this or if they only wrap in leather now or what the changes are, but this has held up pretty well over time. And my complaint would be though that it's quite round. So it, I think is a tang with scales on either side. Maybe they're pinned on, maybe they're not, not, not sure. Uh, and then bound with, with glued paracord on the top. And the, the problem is that it's, it's so round that I, I don't inherently feel where the edge is. I think that could, could be improved. It doesn't have to necessarily be bigger, but a little bit more ovoid would let me really kind of dial in the edge when I hold it. Also, it is slippery, this nylon substance. Don't know if they still use it or not, but it feels slippery in the hand. So if I hold it, I can kind of easily turn it in my hand. And this is a little bit of a test that I do in some sorts of, I white knuckle it and hold it tight and I see if I can turn it in my hand. If I can, that's not ideal. What that usually means is if it turns in my hand when I do this, if I were to go and whack a metal pole, a concrete block, or something that puts a lot of shock in the sword, it's probably going to break my grip and it's going to feel squirrely in my hand. This feels slippery with a bare hand. Maybe a glove would address it. Maybe if I sprayed it with lacquer, it would, it would be a little bit better. Not entirely sure what to do, but it is a little round and slippery. I think just changing the shape would help, um, but maybe the nylon cord would have to go as well. Regardless, it butts up to either fitting quite well, uh, and it's held up really well uh, as well. This has been dropped and moved and used quite a bit. It's gone through temperature changes, and apart from a couple of the, the threads kind of coming out of place that are still actually pretty solid, they've just kind of bubbled out, uh, it's in great shape, and it's held up. Moving up to the cross guard, this one is a little odd. The newer versions are a little bit more refined. It doesn't look like they do this kind of cross guard anymore. It does feel solid as well. It doesn't It doesn't really want to bend. I haven't hit it really hard, but it does feel like it's made of resilient steel and actually a functional cross guard. I, I don't know until I hit it with something, but I, I guess I can tell you that it looks like it's going to do its job. The top little jagged pieces are, are sharp. It provides some sort of texture, but it it looks odd, dinky, and ren fairy to me rather than, than good. Uh, admittedly, though, there is kind of some attempt at shapey coolness, something a little a little bit different here. I appreciate the effort, but I, I can't say I'm, I'm a particular fan of the execution. Uh, the gap in the cross guard, though, very thin, very nice, don't see anything. And how this tang is secured, I think, is the, uh, the shoulders of the blade just kind of gently narrow in. So I'm guessing they mill out a slot and then slide this on and it just kind of friction fits itself and then they uh, secure it on with the, the peg here. I, I would guess that's how, how it's done. And by doing it this way, they leave this kind of little odd section here that looks like narrow, strained shoulders, but it does mean that there's no jagged shoulder that could create a weak point in the sword. So it's a it's a pretty solid methodology and the tangs look like they're, they're pretty robust. Now, um, if I look at the blade, there's a little bit to unpack here. There's a ricasso section, a hexagonal cross section as well that runs almost all the way to the tip of the blade. There's very significant central or uh, secondary bevels here, which almost make a 10-sided <laughs> faceted sword, but hexagonal is the intent. Uh, there's very little, actually no distal taper in it. If I flex it, it kind of flexes in the middle of the sword, which is not, not ideal. And there's no profile taper. It kind of makes the sword, in my mind, look a bit like a toy. Uh, it doesn't I don't know, something about it doesn't look as intimidating as I, as I think it should be, or as it feels in your hand. But I digress. It's got bluing on it. It's been uh, darkened, I think, from the manufacturer, and that as well has held up reasonably well. There's scratches and imperfections in it, but the, uh, the bluing or the forge scale or whatever this black patina is on here has held up and, and helped avoid some of the rust, because it's certainly more rusted on the secondary bevel part that has exposed metal and whatnot. Uh, the sharpness is not great. The previous owner sharpened it, but it's it's sharp-ish, but not so sharp that I had much luck cutting. This is a talky head video too. I, I did cut with it. I didn't film it. It's been a while. I don't recall any bad experiences though. Nothing stood out other than I didn't really successfully cut. I tried bottles, noodles, rolled paper, and you know batted them around. I did cut with a previous badger blade sword with a factory edge as well in a video many moons ago. This one I think cut a little better because it has a better edge on it, but I still didn't have a whole lot of luck cutting with it. Uh, I also, the the handle vibrates a pretty good amount. Uh, I can feel it in my hand when I slap it, but I didn't feel any really aggressive hurdy bits when I was when I was chopping with it, which is another thing to note about usage. But cutting, while I don't have any video, I can tell you that you, you aren't missing much. I, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't do anything other than bat the stuff around, really. 
Anyway, I think if I were a better swordsman and had a keener edge, it would probably cut better. But with a really thick sword and a hexagonal cross-section, I don't think the sword is going to do a lot of the work for me. Uh, anyway, the lines on it are reasonably clean. It's you know reasonably well well made in terms of grind lines and whatnot, or at least what it would have been originally. Uh, in terms of moving it around, though, it's not a comfortable sword to move around. This one has like a point of balance that's about six and a half inches up the guard. It's really chunky in the hand and it doesn't feel like it's easy to get to guard positions. It doesn't feel like I have a lot of point control. It takes effort to start, it takes effort to stop, um, and more or less it's, it's pretty dumpy feeling in the hand. But again, the point being that this is a sword to smash concrete blocks, right? That's, that's normal use for this thing. So being extra robust and thick is a little bit in the realm of expectation. If you're thinking that you're gonna have a sword, then you're probably going to be disappointed in the way this feels. But if you're if you're looking for a sword that can also function as a crowbar, then this is significantly more refined than a crowbar, and it walks the line between the two. Anyway, that's the stuff I can share with you in this kind of quick look at this Badger Blade sword. If you're asking me if it's worth it or not, well, I made a video on one a long time ago, and I don't know that my opinion is necessarily different. I'm not the target audience for this. It's a sword, and I am a sword lover, and I, I do like it, but it's not my cup of tea. Uh, so to me personally, not... Not so much, but kind of, and I suppose that's where maybe my opinions have changed a little bit. Uh, this sword is not going to be for most people, but uh, if you are looking at something for stage combat, for your Ren Faire garb, for something on a budget, because $450 at a Ren Faire is not a huge amount of money for a sword, uh, then this is worthy of consideration. If you want to go in your backyard and have fun and not worry about it, have, have a sword with a warranty, uh, these, these are not necessarily a bad thing. At the same time, if you're expecting a refined historical similarity, dynamic, something that feels a little bit more akin to a sword, this is, is likely going to disappoint. And I think that's primarily who watches watches my channel. But even if you are one of those guys who wants a sword that feels good and not cumbersome in the hands, if you have the luxury of having multiple swords and you've also been loath to go in your backyard and cut shaving cream cans in half or concrete blocks or other dumb things, but you'd like to maybe give it a try, then something like this might let you release some, uh, you know, <laughs> throw off your inhibitions and go in your backyard and, and try cutting some more robust stuff and, and experience what it's like to, to hit those things. Uh, to go throw out two by fours and try to break a pike formation or see w what other things you might be able to learn from it that you wouldn't be able to learn from a, a sword that you you know is going to require some significant maintenance or repair after doing those activities. And so even if even if it isn't your cup of tea, it is made to do a thing that could, in theory, expand your horizons and be educational. And so I'm, I'm glad that I have it, um, but I have the luxury of a few different things like it. And because of the nature of my YouTube channel, I get to do dumb stuff with swords that won't survive. So <laughs> for me, not so much, but I, I do see where it has value and, and where maybe maybe it's worthy of consideration even for the folks that don't necessarily find it particularly alluring. Anyway, that's what I've got. Hopefully it's been an interesting video. Cheers, and thanks for watching.